All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, a very good English toffee. This recipe comes off the internet and it's called Comparte's World Famous English Toffee. I'll put the link up here at some point. And uh, part of what I'm going to show you is a lot of technique. Uh, I've made approximately 30 batches of this English toffee and through that process I've learned a lot of different things that help to make this job easier, faster, and um, things that are kind of hard to figure out the first time. I'll be showing you how to cook the candy and uh, using the tools and that kind of thing. Alright, the recipe calls for uh, one pound of butter and it calls for unsalted butter but I don't bother with that because I use salted butter because it, the recipe says to add salt later so we just do it all in one shot. Uh, I generally buy everything at Costco when I'm doing this in bulk. So here's a pound of butter. We need uh, regular white table sugar. And uh, we need one, one cup of table sugar. We need one cup of brown sugar. We need one tablespoon of corn syrup. And uh, the recipe says that it uh, calls for one and a half to two cups of raw almonds and I also that is in the actual candy and then uh, the recipe that I use I put almonds on the outside of the candy so uh, this is a three pound bag of almonds from uh, Costco and I have found that you end up using about two pounds of almonds per batch when you're all done we need uh, some vanilla I buy this at Costco also and I think the recipe calls for two uh, teaspoons of vanilla and uh, I don't consider this to be a good recipe without chocolate as we'll see later so uh, my candy is dipped in chocolate and coated with almonds this is Trader Joe's chocolate I would recommend using a bittersweet chocolate dark chocolate um, if you use something like uh, Nestle's chips they're way too sweet and they don't have the right texture you need a kind of a tart bitter taste to offset the sweetness of the candy. Uh, it takes about uh, one and a half pounds of chocolate per batch per recipe to make this come out. As you'll see later we'll be melting this and dipping the candy in this chocolate. So we'll go through that process. Now we'll move on to the equipment that I use. Okay we start off with a very heavy saucepan. It's one of the most important things when cooking this kind of candy. The candy is easy to burn. This is a very thick copper clad stainless pan, uh, very heavy heavy handle uh, which is not heat proof so uh, you need to use a mitt on this but the most important thing you can look for, it doesn't matter what the pan is made out of but you do not want a non-stick pan, the temperatures are too high uh, the candy gets up to 300, you want thickness, you want a pan to be very very thick the next thing you want for stirring the candy is a good quality silicon spatula, this is silicon here and um, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I would recommend a wood handle. It tends not to burn or melt if you leave it on the side of the pan like that. Uh, plastic handle would be okay. Now for a long time I used one of these plastic spoons like this and as you can see the spoon is melted and this is probably not from cooking candy but uh, these kind of spoons will not work in the bottom of the pan. The pan gets so hot that as you uh, stir the candy the end of the spatula can melt off and you might even be able to see it on this one, it's kind of corroded and uh, before I knew that this was a problem I cooked candy with these and this plastic would end up in some of the early batches so go buy yourself a good silicon spatula uh, Amazon is a good choice uh, place to purchase this the next thing you need is a high quality uh, thermometer, now I recommend a digital this is the uh, polder it's available for less than 20 bucks on Amazon it's electric, you can set temperatures and alarms. Comes with a probe, and you'll notice the uh, pan attachment here. You'll see that in action a little later. This just clips onto the side of the pan, like that. And then we run the uh, cord over to the thermometer, and we can monitor the candy very easily. One important thing when attaching this to the pan is you don't want the bottom of the probe to touch the bottom of the pan. So you need to set it. So it just is maybe an eighth of an inch above. Uh, it's important that the candy temperature be measured accurately and the way to do that is with this 
probe just above the bottom of the pan. Uh, you'll need uh, cookie sheets, the kind with edges on them, and the reason for that is so that the almonds, the chopped almonds, don't fall off the edge. Ideally, you have two or three of these, at least two, maybe three. Again, you can buy these generally at Costco or a good cooking store. You'll need uh, various uh, stainless bowls for melting chocolate and uh, mixing ingredients in. Now this is uh, kind of another innovation of mine. Uh, chocolate, when you melt it on the stove with a double boiler, that works fine, but the challenge is keeping the chocolate the right temperature uh, for the time that it takes to dip the candy. The candy can take a long time to dip piece by piece. The chocolate tends to cool off. Uh, this is a heating pad that you use for, say, a buffet or whatever. It's got a hot spot on it right here and cooler spots over here. I tend to just melt the chocolate on the stove, then put the bowl on here, and it keeps the chocolate warm as you go. So you don't have to keep going back and forth between the uh, uh, between this countertop and the stove. You just keep it warm right here. Next we have a sieve. I'll show you why we use that. I use that for the almonds. Uh, again, another stainless bowl. And then we have a cutting board and a nut chopper. Now, almonds are tricky to grind. They're very tough nuts and uh, I've had numerous of these uh, nut, nut grinders break. You can see down in there there's little teeth. Uh, if you stick whole almonds in this and try to grind it, uh, they get stuck in there and you keep going, those teeth will break off. I've had these teeth break off and I've had to go find them with a magnet. So uh, my recommendation is to uh, pre-chop the almonds. I'll show you how to briefly do that. Pre-chop them loosely and then grind them. All right, now I'm going to show you how I pre-chop the almonds before grinding. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to show you why you need to do it because if you don't do this, the grinders will fail. So I just use a knife to basically break each almond into uh, a rough piece. Just make sure it's cut a, a little bit. We're not trying to get them to the final size yet. We're just trying to make sure that they're not going to damage the, uh, the hand grinder. So if you're going to do the I also recommend that all the almond work be done before you cook the candy so that they're ready to go. As you can see, here's a bag that's been pre-ground. So we take these almonds, we put them in the grinder. So we put the almonds in, and I use the coarse grind. These have two different uh, directions you can go. One is fine and one is coarse. And we want to go coarse, which I forgot which direction that is now. Okay. And as you see, this is, these are pretty tough to grind. I jam the grinder. And this process for a whole bag of almonds can take an hour. Grind it. Now the next process is to filter these. Uh, and the reason, the reason we do this is because there's a lot of uh, fine grinds and stuff in these. So we throw these into a sieve, we shake them, and as you can see, there's a lot of almond dust in there. We really don't want that in the candy or on the candy. It's just not appealing to the uh, person eating it. It doesn't hurt you in any way, but we sieve these out and now we have nice ground almonds. Okay, so we're going to start our candy process. We're going to start with putting our one pound of butter in the pan. We've got it turned on low. And the first process is to melt the butter. So I'll put these in and get them going. All right, one other piece of equipment that I forgot to mention earlier is the standard uh, kitchen scale. This is an Ascali. Uh, I think it goes up to five pounds. It measures in ounces and grams. Everything you do in cooking should be in grams. Much easier to deal with. So we'll put a measuring bowl on here. We'll hit the tear button. That gets us to zero grams. And now we'll measure our ingredients. I will read the uh, amounts off as we go. One cup of white sugar is the equivalent of 190 grams of sugar. So all I have to do is pour that in there until I'm at 190 on the scale and I'm at 120, 188 you don't have to be exact at 190 then we hit the tear button to go to zero again now we're going to do our brown sugar one cup is the equivalent of 180 grams a little bit lighter see how much easier this is than uh, scooping it out and putting it into a cup so we need 180 grams, we're at 130 Again, you don't have to be super exact. There's 174, there's 184, that's good enough. Again, we hit the tear button to get to zero. And we need uh, one tablespoon of corn syrup, which is the equivalent of 22 grams. Again, I'm at zero on the scale. Now I put 22 grams in, which is about 
There's 22, right on the money. Again, no measuring, no fooling with spoons. And uh, that's all of the um, uh, ingredients that go in the candy itself, except for the almonds. So I'll show you how to measure the almonds in a minute. Okay, we're going to measure our almonds out. Again, same procedure. We have a bowl. We hit the tear button so we get to zero. And we need about one and a half to two cups of almonds. I use 160 grams of ground almonds. Again, no measuring. With a scale, it's real easy. There's 168 grams. It's okay a little bit over. And that's a little more than a cup. Okay, the candy recipe says to melt the butter and then pour in uh, the sugars and uh, then we're going to heat the candy up to uh, 240 degrees and then add the almonds. So the butter's just melted now. I'm going to pour the, in the ingredients that we measured before. An ingredient that I didn't mention before was the water, about a half a cup. I just put that in here. We scrape this into the candy, into the pan, and we plugged in our thermometer. We're going to set the alarm on the thermometer for our 240. Stop it. Go. All right, we've added our ingredients. We're on medium heat here, medium high heat. And the trick with this candy, with all candies that are cooked at high temperatures, is constant stirring. I've got my uh, thermometer. I've got the uh, alarm set for 240. That's when we're going to add the almonds. And then we'll change the temperature. Uh, what happens at 240, we add the almonds. Then we bring the temperature up to 265 turn the heat down and then bring the candy up to about 300. So I'll walk you through that process. So right now we're still at, uh, we're showing uh, 150 degrees on the candy. I'll come back a little later when it's getting warmer. Okay, the candy's at 225 degrees and the real trick with this candy, besides having a really thick pan, is constant stirring. We were scraping the bottom of the pan constantly to keep it from burning and the sides. We work around the uh, temperature probe and constantly scraping the bottom of that pan. Heat is at medium here. Sometimes I cook double batches in a bigger pan. The heat can be a little higher. But we're about 228 degrees here. We're looking for 240, 245, then we'll add our almonds. The key is constant movement, scraping the bottom and the sides of the pan. So we don't want this candy to burn. If any part of it burns, it wrecks the whole batch. Okay, we're just about to 240 degrees. You're going to hear the alarm go off. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention was you need oven mitts for this, stirring. It's very hot, a lot of heat coming off. And uh, here's our alarm for 240. So we take our almonds and we uh, stir and slowly get them in like that. Just incorporate them. The temperature will drop a little bit. And we're going to set our alarm now for 260. Always stirring, always stirring the entire time. Get this in, these almonds incorporated. and. Uh, Setting the temperature for 260 here. Trying to keep this stirring. And at that time, we'll lower the temperature a little bit. I usually go to 265. I'll lower the temperature, and then we'll take it up to 297. At 297, we turn off the heat, keep stirring, and let the candy cool down a bit, and then we'll add the vanilla. So the next time I'll come on, we'll be at about 265. And you can see the candy's uh, not bubbling right now because the almonds have cooled it down. But in a few more minutes, it'll be uh, bubbling again, just like it was before. All right, the candy's at 265, and we're going to lower the heat just a little bit and set the uh, alarm for uh, 297, just a little under 300, which is what the candy's supposed to be. We set it for 297 because there's a little bit of residual heat in this thick pan, and we don't want to go over. So at 297, we'll uh, turn off the heat, pull the temperature probe out, and continue to stir the candy so it doesn't burn. One thing I forgot to mention was that it takes about 20 minutes from melting the butter to getting to the finely cooked point, to the, three, to the 297 point. So plan on 20 minutes standing here stirring this candy. If you have children do this, they need to be uh, mature, able to deal with heat, and uh, able to continuously stir this. If you let it go, you've wrecked the batch. So you can see me constantly moving, never stopping, and you can see the candy's turning a nice, deep, rich brown at this point. Okay, we'll see you back here at 297. A few minutes. Okay, we're at 297. I've turned down the heat. I'm going to continue to stir the candy. Turn off the alarm here. Continue to stir the candy until it cools down just a bit. You can take it off the uh, take it off the stove top. 
This is granite counter. I can set it down here safely, but you have to be really careful if you had formica or a non-stone counter. Keep stirring it until it uh, absorbs some of the heat and cools down a little bit. We don't want the candy to burn. You can even see the sides here. The side of the pan is even a little dark. So see how hot it gets. We're going to stir it down. Now we're going to add our vanilla. Okay, stirring. I'm going to incorporate about two teaspoons of vanilla in. You're going to see it hiss because the candy's pretty hot. Stir that in. Do it gently and carefully. Now the next step is we're going to transfer this candy to a piece of granite. Uh, I think the recipe calls for a cookie sheet. You could use that, but it's uh, not going to be quite as easy to do the cutting in that. So get this candy, get this vanilla mixed in really well. And uh, we we'll walk over here. And as you can see, I've got this uh, granite sheet uh, laid out. You could use marble. You could also use cookie sheet. And this has been pre-buttered so the candy won't stick. Stirring the candy. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this candy onto the granite. Scrape out as much as we can. And the trick now the trick is to get this as evenly, as an even thickness as we can. And ideally somewhat into a nice rectangle. So so I'm spreading this, trying to get it to even thickness. And this granite's pretty cold, so the candy's setting up quickly. This is just somewhat uh, practice to get this right. You can try to square up the edges if you want to make it a little easier to deal with when you're cutting it. Okay, now the trick with this candy is to cut it while it's just cooling. If you miss cutting it while it's cooling, you will have to break it. And you will never get it into regular shapes. If you break it, that's fine if, if you want to do that. But if you want it to be into nice regular shapes, you have to cut it just as it's setting. Okay, so how do we know when it's ready? Well, we just try it. Another tool that I forgot to mention was a pizza cutter. And this works quite well. Um, what we do is the candy cools the quickest around the edges. So we start at the edge and we try it out. So the candy's still a little bit soft. And we do that. Okay, now if it's too soft, it will form back over that hole. We go to another edge. And I'd like to make mine about an inch and a half square. I'm a little bit thin there. Okay, again, we start at an edge. this. Okay, another edge. Candy's a little soft right now, but you'll see if it gets harder. See, now this was soft, so it formed back in a little bit on it. I'm just waiting for it to cool. Don't pour this candy onto your granite countertop. This is a piece of granite on top of my countertop. If you pour it straight onto your countertop, uh, the granite could crack. I've had that happen. This piece will not crack because it's small, but if you were to do it on your straight onto your uh, countertop, you could crack the countertop. The heat can cause a crack. Okay, so the candy's just starting to set up now. And what I'm going to have uh, my helpers do is come and start taking pieces of the candy just as it's ready and it to a cookie sheet. Okay, so that's already getting too hard. So he's going to start pulling these away. Do you need gloves? And these first pieces are a little bit irregular because I don't have a perfect rectangle, but as you see, they'll get more regular as we work. Okay, the candy's starting to harden up, so we have to be careful uh, to move quickly here. If it hardens, it becomes almost impossible to work with. You can hear it get stiff there. It's probably going to be hard here. If you keep on top of it, it the job's pretty easy. If you don't, you can end up with brittle glass, essentially. That's what the candy turns into. Logan's my helper here today. He's going to be helping dip. Dip candy in chocolate in a while. It's okay. You want it to be about a quarter inch there. You can take your finger if it starts to chase away from you and come back on it like that. If you roll towards the center, it works a little better. So the 
just about perfect here in terms of the temperature. The candy's still pretty hot. It's hot to the touch. All right, we've got the uh, candy. We just cut it and we've got it on these cookie sheets. The reason we put it on the cookie sheets is we're going to put this candy in the freezer for about 10 minutes. This quickly chills it. And the reason we want to chill it is because if you start dipping it in the chocolate when it's hot, the chocolate won't stick. So we want to get it so it's basically slightly cooler than room temperature. So we're going to stick this in. We have room in here and start our timer for 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to start melting our chocolate while the candy's in the freezer cooling off. This is the Trader Joe's uh, one pound blocks. Usually I break them up and then throw them in the double boiler. So I'll just break them on the edge of the, can on the, edge of the uh, granite here. I'm trying to break it on the squares. Makes it just a little easier to deal with up oh, until that happens. Okay. And I'm going to take this over and put it in the double boiler. Okay, we've got our double, double boiler, just a standard pan with a uh, bowl, half an inch of water in the pan, and a, and a uh, stainless bowl sitting on top of it. We've already got some chocolate melted. We're going to add a little bit more because I know we're going to need it. It does melt a little faster and easier if you break it up. It would be better broken up into squares. I wasn't able to do that due to filming reasons discussion on the internet about melting chocolate and dis, uh, melting it to correct temperature. I have found that if you melt the chocolate, get it melted, that's good enough. It doesn't. You don't have to measure it with a temperature probe or anything like that. Just keep stirring it and melting it over a double boiler and it will work fine. You just don't want it so hot that it uh, is really soupy and you don't want it so cold that it sticks too much to the candy. So just get it melted uh, double boiler works fine. As soon as these chunks are gone, we'll be ready to go. And you'll get a feel for it as you go, but just get it melted. Alright, uh, we've got a couple of cookie sheets, and uh, we're going to put the almonds in the bottom of the cookie sheet. You'll see how that works. We're going to put the, uh, the uh, chocolate dipped candy in the bottom of these. Put just enough almonds to layer a thin coat on the bottom, like that. It has to be completely covered, but no more than... You can put as many as you want, but you do need enough to cover the bottom. Just like that, I'll shake them around a little bit. That's pretty good. Now you notice that there's chunks of, chunks of chocolate in this. It's because we're reusing these almonds from a previous batch. One thing you want to not do is use the almonds that have chocolate pieces in it to go in the candy itself. This chocolate will burn, so you need to make sure that any almonds you have for reuse don't go in the candy itself. And you can see why you want these pre-ground because uh, our candy is just about ready for dipping now. It's uh, only a couple minutes left to come out of the freezer. And if we had to grind these almonds, it takes a long, long time to grind these. Okay, so we've got, shake that out, and we're now ready to put the dipped candy, chocolate dipped candy in here. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. We're going to take the candy out of the freezer. And you'll notice that it's got kind of a pale color. That means it's cooled down. We put our trays out. We're going to take the candy and just put it into a bowl for easier access. And then we'll start the dipping. So we'll see you back in a minute. All right, we've got our candy out of the freezer in a bowl. We've got our chocolate off of the double boiler onto the hot plate. The hot plate's pretty warm to the touch. I generally leave it on high. You want to keep stirring this chocolate. You can see the consistency of it. This is just about right. It might be a little bit hot. What we're going to do is uh, dip the candy into the chocolate, shake it off, and then put it into the uh, almond tray. And then we're going to pour almonds on that. So we'll show you a few of these. Uh, you, usually, you want to get chocolate on all sides. These gloves really help when this chocolate's hot, shake it off and lay the candy over there. Make sure there's any fingerprints on it that you cover them up. And this is a long, slow process. Each piece, good for kids as long as they don't burn themselves. It is messy. Your clothes will get chocolate on it. Your floor will get chocolate on it. Again, if the chocolate's too hot, it will run off. If the chocolate's too cold, it'll get too thick. Too thick's not that bad, except you do use a lot of chocolate. Like I said, you use about a pound and a half of chocolate per batch. Just carefully laying this uh, in the almonds. You don't move it after you lay it down, otherwise it makes a big mess in the almonds. So Logan is here helping me. We usually get two people doing this. And this is one batch of candy you see. It's about 100 pieces, maybe, maybe a little less, maybe 70 pieces of candy. So we'll come back when we're ready to pour the almonds on the top. All right, we've got a... Uh, tray of uh, candy that's been dipped in chocolate and laid out on the lower layer of almonds. Now we're going to put almonds on the top. We just take a bag, coat them well, 
Don't worry about putting too many on because we'll, they'll come off and you can reuse them. So give them a good coating. And uh, another thing that's important about putting chocolate on this candy is that the recipe does say you can eat it without the chocolate, but the chocolate helps protect the candy. The candy gets wet or it stays in the air too long. It does kind of get gooey and sweaty. Uh, I like to keep the candy in the refrigerator with the chocolate on and it protects it. Got the almonds on here, I'm going to take a piece of parchment paper, lay it flat, and just push firmly like that. That pushes the almonds into the chocolate and makes it nice. Okay, now, just carefully, you'll see some chocolate on the bottom of that. No problem, we'll just reuse this in a minute. And now, we take this tray and we put it back in the freezer to set the chocolate for about 10 minutes. So we put the candy in when it was uh, not chocolate uh, for 10 minutes to cool it off and now we're putting it back in to set the chocolate, make it nice and easy to deal with for about 10 minutes. See you back in 10. All right, when you're done dipping your candy, you'll have some extra chocolate and we're gonna save that. I usually put it in these uh, disposable Tupperware things and freeze it. It saves up to a year, no problem. So just pour it in your containers like this. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Our candy's been in the freezer. We've been setting the chocolate so that we can uh, deal with the candy. If we don't set the chocolate, then the almonds and stuff will fall off and the candy will be gooey. So it might take 15 minutes, not 10 minutes. We're gonna take this out, we brush, take the candy out, brush the almond off. You'll notice the chocolate's nice and stiff. And we're gonna transfer this to a bowl so we can reuse this if we were making multiple batches. Okay, uh, when you're done with your uh, candy and you're all done dipping it in almonds and that, take your almonds, put them in a Ziploc bag. Like that. And remember, these almonds have pieces of chocolate in them, so they can't go inside the cooked candy. They can't go in the first process where you add the almonds to the candy. These almonds, since they have chocolate, can only be used for uh, dipping the candy in. I put a big X on the bag to let me know that these almonds, I'll call them dirty, they're not dirty, they just have chocolate in them. And I keep the clean almonds, the almonds without chocolate, for actually adding to the candy as we're cooking it. Zip these up, throw them in the freezer, they're good for next year when you make more. All right, we've got the candy uh, in our bowl. It's uh, chilled so we can deal with it. And the last thing we do is we put the candy into small bags, about four or five pieces per bag, and we give this out to our neighbors and friends. We usually tie a ribbon around it and um, put a little piece of paper that lists the ingredients and um, so they know what's in it and let them enjoy it. And there you go, world famous English toffee made with the finest ingredients and the finest process. Enjoy. Okay, and now for the uh, final best thing of this whole process, eating the candy. Here we go. Mm. It's good. Yep, good, crunchy, sweet. Can't be beat.